It's a perfect day in Galilee. This is News Channel 7, the Galilean Gazette. The holiest news you'll find on your tablet. I am Baba Wawa. And I'm Shelly Grace. Welcome back to our series called Fruit. Each week, we get to introduce a new fruit along with an exciting Bible story. Last week, it was all about strawberries and how they are one special fruit. Their seeds grow on the outside, just like us outwardly sharing our faith in Jesus with everyone around us. And the Bible story was the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus outwardly taught his followers to love the world around them. That's right, Baba Wawa. Kids, I'll tell you what, with all these amazing fruits we've been talking about, not only am I learning so much about the fruit that I didn't know before, but it reminds me that the Bible story goes right along with it, and it helps me remember the Bible story so much better, too. That's great, Shelly Grace. That's exactly what we're hoping for. So before we reveal this week's fruit and Bible story, I just wanted to say that there are some fruits that everyone eats, right? Mm -hmm. Yet there are some fruits that only a few people like because maybe they're not as appealing as apples, oranges, bananas. But appealing or not, those less popular fruits are power packed with nutritional value too. Oh yes, these select fruits often have strange names like acai berries and pomegranates. Some are a little bit more difficult to find and some are pretty expensive. And some, like today's fruit, are just plain strange looking. Shelly, do you think now is a good time to introduce this week's fruit? I sure do. All right, draw more please. It is kiwi. <laughs> okay, and to be fair, this unique fruit is far from the strangest working fruit at the grocery store. Ugly fruit, spell with an I, is very, very strange looking. Yet, you do have a point. How many fruit do you know that look like they have sort of like hair growing on the outside? It's almost like they're it's like a tiny gerbil or a hamster or something. Does anyone want to have a gerbil for dinner? I didn't think I I don't think I would. No, I don't think so either. And the kiwi only gets most strange when you cut one open. Once you finally get past that furry skin and inside it's bright green and it feels a little swimy. And inside, there are little black seeds that help make the kiwi one of the strangest and least appealing fruits anywhere, really. So kids, have any of you ever tried a kiwi before today? If you have, you know why this strange looking fruit made it onto the grocery store. Because kiwi is very sweet with a flavor that kind of tastes like a strawberry. Mmm, it's delicious. It's juicy and delicious, and what's even better, it's good for you. Mm -hmm. In fact, kiwi contains more vitamin C than oranges. Mm -hmm. I think God gave us kiwi to remind us that sometimes the best things in life come to us in extraordinary ways. Today, mm -hmm. we're going to read one of the strangest and most extraordinary stories in the Bible. A story sounds like it probably came right out of the movies. So follow us through this amazing story to see how sometimes God speaks to us in extraordinary ways. And we'll meet you right back here when it's over. This is the story of Balaam <laughs> and his donkey. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moabite officials. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in front of the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road and into a field. Balaam hit the donkey and led him back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. Yes! So he heard the donkey again. 
Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and he was angry and hit the donkey with his staff. The Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Uh Balaam answered the donkey, You have made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this very day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you, because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with Balak's officials. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town on the Arnon border, at the edge of his territory. And Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send you an urgent summons? Why didn't you come to me? Am I really not able to reward you? I'm really sorry. Well, I have come to you now. Balaam replied, but I can't say whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. The end. Wow, welcome back, kids. And our story today, Balaam wasn't listening for a message from the one true God. He knew deep down that God would protect Israel. The last thing he wanted was to heal from God, but God was not about to be ignored. That's right, Barbara. That's why God sent an angel to stop him. So when Balaam became furious with the donkey, God made the donkey talk. It's so hard to believe. The thing is that God wants to speak and God is and be in our lives too. There's just no limit. He won't go to to reach us. And kids, it's really important to know that when God speaks to us, that we really need to listen, pay close attention. I mean, and then after, when we are done listening, then we are called to be ready to respond to whatever message that he has given us. Let me tell you something else. God can speak and will speak in many different ways. One of those ways is by reading your Bible. Some people think that a Bible is just a collection of old stories, but let me tell you, it is so much more. And the Bible has a way of speaking to us like no other book ever will. Oh, yes. So true, Shelly. And there will be other times like when you're reading your Bible and suddenly an answer you've been like searching for or maybe guidance that you've been asking for will be right in front of you. God's Word can talk to people in very extraordinary ways. So God may also talk to us through a worship song or a praise song on the radio as the words you hear will give you encouragement that you'll need maybe on a bad day. Through a sermon you heard months ago and sometimes God will talk to us through our parents, our friends, or maybe sometimes even a total stranger. (laughs) Yes, and if God can make a donkey talk, He can speak to us in any way he chooses. The key to hearing God is to slow down and to listen. And the hardest thing for us to do most times is that some of us can pray for hours telling God what we need, when we need it, and why we need it. But when it comes to listening, well, I know I fall short. Me too. In our story today, God had to really stir things up to get Balaam's attention. But had Balaam only been listening, it would have been a lot less embarrassing for him. 
God always wants to speak to his children. So when we commit ourselves to following Jesus, he will always speak to us and guide us. Remember kids, sometimes God speaks to us in extraordinary ways. Mm, that's so true. Well kids, that's all for today. We hope you enjoyed our story. Please be sure to join us next week. And I wonder what fruit we'll get to talk mm. about. I don't know. That's so amazing. I can't <laughs> wait. So from all of us here at News Channel 7, can, can we be, be friends? friends? <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was funny. You want to eat oh, this? Oh, we're showing. Mm, yeah, we're going to be friends. Good. Let's cut this off and it go have some. It was really delicious.